Okay, so what's what's Terra, right? Um, actually, I wanted to start by asking everyone who some of you use Terra, of course. What is Terra? Because I think um, Terra is probably one of the blockchains that is more difficult to understand. So I'll just explain a little bit why. So what's Terra? Terra was founded by these two Korean guys, uh, Daniel Shin and Do Kwon. Uh, they're quite prominent on Twitter, so you should go and follow them as well. It's quite interesting personalities. Um, but uh, in contrast to a blockchain like, for example, Ethereum or you know the Binance Smart Chain, right, where uh, the primary token, uh, Ethereum or BNB, is a utility token, um, for Terra, they're taking a bit of a different approach. So initially, when Terra was launched, um, the project of Terra was basically to create a price stable uh, and, let me just correct a typo here, sorry, growth-driven cryptocurrency to grow uh, popular blockchain adoption. So what does this mean, right? Um, if, if you are familiar with crypto, or even if you're not, right, one of the biggest problems in crypto is uh, this concept of stable coins. Uh, so what's the problem with stable coins? Uh, so you and I, we, we use Singapore dollars, uh, we use US dollars, we use currencies worldwide, right? Um, why do we believe these have value? Um, a big part of it is that uh, we believe that the currencies right in the banks are pretty much collateralized. So there's something backing the currency, like the currency is not going to disappear or evaporate, you know, any one day. Um, in certain countries, like if you go to countries where monetary policy go out of control, uh, like Zimbabwe, obviously you can see that when there's people feel that there's nothing backing the currency, um, there's a lot of risk, right, in, in the economic system. Um, but in crypto, right, what's the biggest problem? The biggest problem is that uh, collateralized um, stable coins are actually a waste of capital. Uh, think about it, you're locking a bunch of assets to issue and mint stable coins to pack it to US dollars. So I think one of the biggest projects is really to how do we create an algorithmic stable coin that has a, a way to pack to the US dollars. Um, uh, and Terra was basically conceived of as such. Uh, before I go on, if this sounds a bit confusing to you, um, I would argue that the Terra uh, concept is very similar to what, for example, Olympus is doing. Right, in trying to create a, a, a stable uh, asset pool uh, that can be used right, uh, you know, to drive growth in other projects. So uh, I'll just uh, continue. Uh, so what's UST? So um, if you think about the Terra ecosystem, there's two main tokens that you need to know. The first is Luna, right? And, uh, and the other one is UST. So uh, UST is simply a stable coin that is central to the Terra project. So um, users of crypto will be familiar with USDC, with DAI. These are other stable coins that have equivalent value to the US dollars. Um, however, what Terra does is that it uses an algorithm, right? And the reserve token Luna to maintain a peg. So if you look at the graphic here, right? Um, whenever the peg moves, right? Uh, Luna is used, right? And this is, I'm, I'm using this in very layman terms, right? Uh, Luna is drawn upon to maintain this peg. And how this works is that Luna is actually burned and there's the smart contracts, right? Basically, um, basically require that Luna be burned in order for, uh, for um, UST to be minted. And if you think about it, right, what's the biggest risk of this project? Uh, given that Luna is the reserve currency, the biggest risk is that people don't value Luna. So let's say you and I all agree that Luna has no value. UST will collapse entirely. Uh, so the Terra ecosystem is focused on building demand for Luna and UST, because the demand for these stable coins and, and the token Luna actually creates a very virtuous cycle and ecosystem, right? Which enables UST, and this is the grand vision of the Terra project, uh, to become one of the most stable uh, uh, denominational currencies uh, to be used to transact, not just on the blockchain, but on everyday things. And uh, in the next slide, you'll see this very clearly. So if you look at the Terra ecosystem, you have a lot of things, right? And we've shown you the ecosystem maps from like Ethereum, from BSC, from Polygon. Um, if you look at Terra, it's very similar. But one thing that stands out in Terra um, is that there are a lot of, they are building a lot of things that focus on this intersection between uh, the blockchain world and sort of what you and I call real life, right? Even though now it's a bit mixed up. So what do I mean by real life? Um, in Korea, there's a service called ChiaPay. It's actually founded by one of the co-founders of Terra. 
And basically, they integrated a payment system where users can use UST to pay for certain things. Like, like e-commerce e is the biggest use case. Uh, they can also use it to pay for utilities, etc. So this is the really notable feature about Terra, that um, the main focus of the growth is not just within the blockchain, not just within uh, creating decentralized versions of many, many aspects of, of, of things that we see in real life, right? For example, like in DeFi, where you know, the financial world is transposed. Uh, into you know this into the blockchain. However, um, for Terra, they really want to expand the use cases, so that UST is not just like a currency that you use in Terra, but through Terra you can actually do stuff in real life, and that's something that um, up till now, right, we don't really see that much across uh, many different blockchains. Um, there are companies that are doing it, focusing on this like on and off ramp, getting your money out, uh, but Terra wants to do it all. In the, in the ecosystem. And obviously, because they pack the UST to the US dollar, right? It's very easy to understand value. So one of the common criticisms is like, okay, if you transact in Ethereum, every day the price of Ethereum is changing, right? How does that work? But in the Terra ecosystem, they are focused on using UST, which maintains that soft pack to the US dollar. Yeah. So um, that's a little bit about Terra. I hope that's a good sort of simple summary. Uh, Jackie, do you want to add anything? Okay. Uh, no, no. It's good. Okay, then I'll continue. So um, one of the most unique features about Terra is that, um, okay, in the past few sessions, we introduced you to Ethereum and then BSC uh, and Polygon. Uh, one unique feature is that, you know, we talked about the MetaMask wallet, right? Which basically can be used uh, across all these chains. Why? Because they are EVM compatible. They're compatible with the Ethereum virtual machine. Uh, they are built using the same code, which is Solidity. However, for Terra, right, it's different. It's not EVM compatible, which means that uh, any app on Ethereum or any Ethereum compatible chain cannot be easily transposed or moved or bridged or fought to Terra. So if you look at what's on Terra, right, everything is being built on Terra uh, more or less autonomously. Conceptually, maybe the same, but the code is different. Uh, so in order to access Terra, uh, most users actually have to use, nat I mean, you have to use a native wallet to Terra. And the most common wallet is called Terra Station. Okay, so um, the concept behind Terra Station is actually very simple. Um, in fact, uh, I'll go through the next slide. The steps to sort of get into Terra Station, Terra Station is very similar to how you would download MetaMask and, and use it, right? So uh, I think today what we really wanted to introduce to everyone is the fact that there are multiple wallets for different chains. Certain chains uh, that are not EVM compatible require you to download new wallets, right? to interact with these blockchains. Terra is one of them. Another one, which many of you may be familiar with, is Solana, where you have to use uh, other wallets. So one of the most popular ones is called Phantom. That's the one that pretty much most people are using right now. And, but the concept is similar. So different wallet, but similar concept. I think that's the real message we want to put through to everyone. So in the next slide, I'm going to show, talk a little bit about how to access Terra Station. So the steps are actually really, really simple. You just have to go to the website, the Terra Station website, click on download Terra Station extension. And Terra is great because there's also sort of mobile compatibility, which a lot of chains actually don't really support. Okay, so once you download this, all you have to do is to create a new wallet. And if you look at the right side here, right, um, all these should be very familiar to you. Create a wallet name, create a password, and then type in your seed phrase. So obviously I blank this out so that you can't see mine. But um, again, like as we encourage you, you should write down the seed phrase and store it in a very safe place because this is the only way to recover your wallet. Okay, so for anyone who's asking, right, for MetaMask, you can restore your wallet on MetaMask across different blockchains because your key is the same. But for Terra, you have to actually restore it within the Terra blockchain. So you have to restore it using any Terra compatible wallet, right? And uh, our suggestion is if you start with Terra Station and let's say you change your computer, just use Terra Station. It's the easiest way to make sure that you don't uh, have, lose access to your assets. So once you do that, you're actually connected to Terra. It's as simple as that once you create the wallet and the interface of uh, the Terra wallet is very similar uh, to MetaMask. So let me, let me just show you, uh, give me a second. I'm gonna switch my screen. Yeah, can, can everyone see my screen? Yeah. Yeah, so if you download Terra Station, it shows up in the extensions, right? As you can see, I have MetaMask as well. Uh, and basically, um, because this is more of a browser-based experience, simply connect, right, my wallet, and you can see it's already connected. This is the Terra address, and my wallet's connected. 
it's as simple as that. And when you click on the extension, right, you can see basically the tokens that you have. I haven't added any, this is a new wallet. Uh, and the interface looks almost the same as MetaMask. Like it's just different colors and, you know, slightly different. Uh, and if you, even the settings are actually pretty similar. So not that much different. So I think want to reassure of you that accessing a, a blockchain, a new blockchain, is as simple as downloading a new wallet and visiting the website. Uh, that's really all you need to do. There's nothing really unique or special about it. Yeah. So uh, let me go back to the slides. Okay, so that's about Terra Station. So how do you get stuff into Terra? Okay, if you remember, right, um, getting stuff into BSC and Polygon, there are two ways, right? Uh, you can either bridge your assets from one blockchain to another, or you can use a centralized exchange to get your assets into the blockchain. For Terra, it is exactly the same. Uh, the beauty of it is that uh, Terra team has actually built a native Terra bridge, right? And this is actually integrated. This is actually the primary way to get money to Terra for most people. Uh, the bridge allows you to move assets from either Ethereum, Binance Smart Chain, or Harmony into Terra. So let's say you have a USDC on Terra uh, on Ethereum. You can move that to Terra, right? And there's a certain number of assets that you can do it for. Um, we recommend that you use BSC or Harmony. Because uh, anyone who's using Ethereum right now, you're either really rich or you, you, know, you don't really care about money, uh, but it's expensive and it's almost prohibitively expensive. So we encourage um, all of you to use chains that offer you know, um, greater throughput and lower fees. Um, alternatively, you know, the other way is you buy Luna and or UST on a centralized exchange and transfer this to Terra. However, I want to emphasize that because Terra is a separate blockchain, you do need to use a centralized exchange that enables transfers to Terra. And this one, you have to be very sure because, for example, right, you could buy Terra on, uh, for example, FTX, right? But you could only transfer Terra in the ERC format, which means that you're actually transferring, uh, sorry, Luna. You're actually transferring Luna to Ethereum rather than, you know, the Terra blockchain. So you have to be very careful with this uh, and always check that you are bridging it to Terra, sending it to the Terra network. Um, one sort of issue that many users face for centralized exchanges is that um, when you want to transfer stuff, it's not necessarily 100% uh, available. There are many times where it's actually not available because of maintenance, et cetera. So please bear that in mind as you do that. Um, for myself, uh, to access Terra, I use OKEX. Uh, they have a bridge to Terra. Uh, there are also other exchanges that do that. Um, please feel free to explore. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to stop here. We're going to do a quick Q&A on Terra. I'm sure some of your questions. Uh, I'll hand the time back to Jackie. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Clinton. Um, let me just see if you, anyone has any questions. Maybe let me just quickly recap first while you drop any questions that you all have. Um, so to get started on um, Terra, right, it's as simple as downloading the Terra station um, and set up an account. And with the account, right, you can then deposit Luna into the Terra Station wallet. And with your Luna inside your Terra Station wallet, right, you can then interact with all the protocols that are on the Terra ecosystem. Okay, uh, so let me just take a look at um, some of the questions. Uh, number one, what do you make of the recent Luna burning? Um, duh, duh, duh. Uh, Clinton, you have any answers to this? Uh, I mean, for my take is, I think the Luna burn is, um, it's only like yesterday or two days ago, right? Um, basically, what it means is that um, there's going to be lesser supply, which is good for the ecosystem and you will push up the price. Lah. Yeah, Clinton, you want to add on to that? Yeah, I think um, it's not really unique to Terra. I yeah. think um, every blockchain has a burning mechanism. Like Ethereum with the latest upgrade has it. Uh, BNB has it as well, you know. So um, I think it's a feature that you will see across all blockchains to control supply. Yeah. But definitely, as as Terra matures, like is, is this is a good sign that the ecosystem is maturing as well. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Um, let me see number two. Will the team be teaching us how to on ramp to Terra? Oh, um, we we didn't plan for the um uh, demo for the on ramp, but basically, uh, for on ramp, right? What I do, so we have an article on this. Um, for on ramp, what, what I do is basically I buy uh, BUSD or USD on FTX, and then on FTX, right, I transfer it over to BSC, uh, which is a uh, pancake swap, right? And then after that, on pancake swap, I get my UST, uh, which is the, uh, the stable coin of Luna, and I bridge it over via the bridge. Yeah, it's as simple as that. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so that is. 
question number two. Uh, we, 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 unfortunately, I don't think we can do a demo. Maybe after this, we might demo, but <laughs> to find money to transfer over. Uh, sorry, I don't have any money right now. I think Clinton got no money or so. So we can't, <laughs> so uh, we, we I, can't I can, do that. I can, I can show you guys the bridge. Uh, yeah. It's actually very simple. So just yeah. give me a second, bear with me. Yeah, so there was a community member that mentioned also. So other than the Terra Bridge, right, there's also the recent uh, Wormhole Bridge. Uh, which is also very simple. Lah. So you just need to connect your wallet and just send it over. Yeah. Terry Clinton, uh, I see your screen. You want to uh, briefly uh, talk about it? Yeah, so Terra Bridge is actually very uh, simple. If you look at it, right, basically you connect your wallet, right? Like, and once you connect your wallet, um, basically just choose which chain you want to move your assets on. So if you see, right, if I select, for example, BSC, it will tell me which wallet I want to connect to. So um, if you have a BSC connection, basically you just connect your MetaMask, right? Uh, I probably can do that here as well. Oh, your wallet, a lot of money. <laughs> yeah, a lot, so much, <laughs> can't believe it. Yeah, so these are the test ones. So like basically once you do that, your MetaMask on the left side is connected to your Terra station on the right side, right? Essentially, it will recognize how many assets you have on BSC and you can choose from here. There's quite a few, right? Which you can acquire on BSC through PancakeSwap. And then uh, type the amount, the address, uh, which is basically your Terra address, right? You can retrieve it from here. Yeah, is this? So let's say I'm really rich. I have a, a lot of Terra. Yeah, and then just connect your wallet and then you can send. Yeah, yeah. so it's, it's as simple as that. But, and um, not, not too much to worry. For the exchanges, right? The process is the same as how you would withdraw any asset to any other chain. The only thing that we want to sort of caution you is that please check that you're transferring to Terra because uh, a Luna can exist on multiple blockchains. There's Luna on BSC, there's Luna on Ethereum, uh, similar to how there's Ethereum on BSC, right? It's the wrap token uh, and on other blockchains as well. So just be very aware of this. Yeah. Yeah. So for all transfers, again, very simple. My caveat is always if it's your, if it, if it's your first time doing a bridge, you just send the minimum amount. And then like, for example, 0 0.1 Luna, which is worth like $5 right now, you send it across and then if it works, you send the rest. Lah. Yeah, so that's the second question. Um, the third question, uh, Terra NAM services, where does it show on the Terra if I bought it? Um, I think for TNS, uh, Terra NAM services, um, you can connect it to, um, uh, shit, what's the, random, no, uh, no random, you can't see it. There's another, uh, what's the second NFT platform for uh for that one uh, for Luna? It's not random up, oh, there's another one. Uh, I don't think it appears on your on your Random Earth. Nowhere. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nowhere, nowhere. So TNS actually, uh, Terra Name Services actually launched, their launch partner is with, is with Nowhere. Uh, so if you want, uh, if you have bought your, your, your Terra Name Services already, right, you connect to Nowhere, it will appear there. Yeah, I think, lah, if I'm correct. Okay, um, let me see. What other questions do we have? Jason, <clears throat> Jason asked, why would we stick into uh, into Terra? Is it for the airdrop? If so, isn't it very troublesome to track down which airdrops you can get? Um, <clears throat> yes. So as with all tokens, right, or all crypto, right, the reason why you stick is basically to get reward. You get rewarded in two ways. One, either in Luna, uh, in, in, in the native token. Two is in airdrops. So Terra, a bit interesting. I think the, this one is the second, the second portion, right, um, Clinton? Uh, so we will probably talk about that later, yeah. right? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So, so uh, Jason, to answer your question, yes, uh, it's for the airdrop. Uh, if so, isn't it very troublesome to track which airdrops you can get? Uh, there are actually websites. So I see that someone already shared a few websites where you can um, track your airdrops and we will mention it later also. Lah. Um, let me see what other question. Can transfer Luna from Binance to Terra Station directly? Yes, you can. Um, Let's see, uh, New Tang has a question. I had trouble bridging UST from BSC over to Terra using mobile. <sighs> I managed to do it on desktop, but can it not be done on mobile on the go? Yeah, uh, I, think, I think for this one, right? Generally speaking, right? I think just be very careful when you use mobile uh, because sometimes it's not even, um, it's not even the, the fact that there's an issue with the chain or something. It's, it might be your mobile connection, right? To be honest, for the data packet. 
uh, and, and sometimes if it lags, right, you don't really know, like you have to check the chain explorer to see the status of it. So I think it's best to like, just do it with a computer just for your peace of mind because, uh, and do it with stable internet. Like don't go to a dodgy Starbucks and try to like do stuff. Uh, if the connection goes off, like it could be problematic for you. Uh, but that's more in terms of transmitting the transaction rather than, oh, my money is lost. It, it will not be lost. It's more of like, what is the status of the transaction on the blockchain? Yeah. Yeah, so for, for me, right, I feel like for all crypto-related stuff or blockchain-related stuff, right, guys, just do it on desktop. La. <laughs> like, I feel like desktop is more optimized. You can easily, again, track the, the all the transactions on the blockchain easily. Um, and mobile is just, it's just riskier, la, in my opinion. La. So use a desktop is better. La. Yeah. yeah, and just to add to that, right, um, even though, like, for example, Terra Station has mobile functionality, right, a lot of the decentralized apps that you'll be interacting with actually don't. So if you open the website, you're actually opening on your mobile browser, which might not be the most optimized viewing experience. Uh, I think this has happened a lot. So I, I would encourage everyone to uh, just try to use the desktop for a while and then you'll see there's a very big difference. And maybe you'll grow to love doing it and you won't rely on your mobile so much anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so Neil has a follow-up question. If a dip happens and you don't have a laptop on hand, oh, very simple. We hold through the dip. We do not sell Luna until it is $200. Dude, after Diamond has this thing, la. don't think don't, don't about it. Yeah. But we jokes didn't... aside, right? I actually bring my laptop everywhere. So in case... <laughs> and I bring two laptops everywhere in case one runs out of battery. So like, yeah. Some right, component so... is required. Yeah, okay, so if you knew Matthew you wanted to buy more, la, uh, yeah, but, but I think uh, no la, so we just have to use desktop as much as possible. La, so it's, it's just that. that la. Okay, anyway, sorry, let, let, let's just continue um, the, the, the next section first and then we ask, uh, we, we continue our Q&A. La. Okay, we go through the next uh, section, Clinton. Okay, okay. So let's go. We can revisit some of these later on as well. You can answer any questions you have. Okay, so why use Terra, right? Like, as Jackie said, why use crypto? Why do you go into crypto? It's to get rewards. Why, why do you get rewards? Because everything is decentralized. Because now you take control of your assets. You take control of the growth of the ecosystem. And you are now an active participant. So um, in the early phases of Terra, right? And I want to emphasize this a lot, right? The rewards were insane. Right At this point, everything I'm going to show you is a very sort of steady state version. Why? Because Terra adoption has increased a lot. And UST is now a fairly established currency. But just maybe four months ago, right, there was a very different situation. Um, when UST was sort of listed on certain um, other blockchains, many people were confused. In fact, they, were, they thought it was a scam. Like, what's this nonsense? Versus, you know, um, uh, US, US, UST, right? Like Tether, right? But if you think about it, even USDC is a very... A recent thing that gained prominence, right? As circle grew. So um, as we go through the next section, uh, I just want to make sure that this point is clear because early adoption is always rewarded. Uh, for all of you that got your ENS airdrops, congratulations. That's one of the prime examples of early adoption. Uh, but for Terra, uh, the ecosystem rewards early adoption. In fact, it rewards the people that stake on Terra because you're contributing positively to this uh, ecosystem of stable coins. So uh, how do you stake on Terra? So the great thing about Terra is that Terra Station is like a one-stop shop. So when they conceived of Terra Station, right, um, it was like, it's basically like the place where you do all things that would be essential on Terra, like your wallet, okay, your dashboard, and staking is essential. So what's staking, right? Essentially, uh, it's a very simple concept. When you own uh, Luna, what you're doing is that you are, you, you can actually delegate this to, to uh, certain validators, right? And the validators will use, hold your Luna, right? To, uh, to basically stabilize the blockchain. So what do they do? Validators are actually the miners. So you probably hear this term a lot. And they secure the blockchain by running programs. So these are the nodes that allow them to verify each transaction in exchange for staking rewards and from transaction fees. So every time a transaction is transmitted on the blockchain, right? The miners actually need to verify and mine it, right? And this process, they, they will get sort of paid. So if you think about Ethereum, right, that's why uh, there are many validators because basically they get paid and the gas fees are so high because it's fully decentralized. So for Terra, right, you can see if you go to the website, there's a number of sort of uh, uh, validators. Uh, they even sort of rank the validators by voting power, which also means uh, how much uh, Luna they have staked, right? And basically uh, the more uh, voting power they have, 
uh, the more lunar they have. So they are one it, of the key nodes, basically. Clinton, the, the slide, we, we move to the corresponding slide. It's still at okay. Q&A. Oh, sorry, sorry. Can everyone see the slides now? Yes, yes, we can. Okay, okay, sorry, sorry about that. All right, I'll just pause here. But if you look at the, the, the left side, right, you can see that the staking panel is integrated into Terra Station. So it's very simple interface. And uh, I'll walk through some of these uh, sort of, uh, um, um, what do you call it, metrics uh, in the next slide. Okay, so how, how do you stake on Terra, right? It's also a very simple process. So I think uh, a lot of stuff on the blockchain has evolved to the point where the UI UX is super friendly to everyone, right? Just the click of a few buttons. So you go to basically the staking page, uh, you will see a full list of validators. So if I go back, you can see there's a number of top validators here. They rank them by voting power, which is how much uh, Luna they have, right? And there are a few metrics that you should take a look at. So if you click on any of them, it will show you four metrics, right? Voting power, uh, self-delegation, commission, and uptime. Uh, so the uptime, right, is basically uh, how, like basically are they like 100% on or do they shut off sometimes? Um, and this is very important because this is basically a mark of stability of the particular validator you might be choosing. Uh, Self-delegation, uh, this metric is basically how much of the, the Luna that they're staking is actually owned by them rather than from people who delegate to them. Uh, a higher percentage also means that they have more skin in the game. So they're unlikely to have you know, that many issues. And voting power is just a ranking of how much Luna they have uh, as a validator. So um, when you choose, right, uh, we encourage you to choose the one that has the lowest commission rate. So what's commission? Commission is when uh, you, you, you delegate uh, your Luna to a validator, they take a cut of it. So if I go back to the previous slide, right, you can see that the commission is different for different uh, validators. So for simplicity, I think um, trust the blockchain, uh, just choose the ones that are more emerging. Uh, typically, you will not encounter many issues. If you are paranoid, uh, choose the top three, right? That's, that's always a simple rule uh, that we follow. Okay, and once you do that, simply click delegate and basically your Luna will be delegated to the validator. And this is actually staking. So that's it. You will start accruing rewards and you can claim them. Uh, and you can also undelegate or move your delegation anytime. However, uh, because if you remember what I mentioned just now, right? The whole premise of Terra is to create a very stable system, right? And to do that, um, they try, uh, basically when you delegate your, your Luna, um, there's a 21 day unstake period. So if you were to take it out, right, you have to wait 21 days. And in this period, you do not get any rewards, right? And I want to emphasize this. So a lot of you might be thinking, oh my God, like why would I do this? If I do this on PancakeSwap, I can take my money out anytime. Why would I want to stake on Terra? So uh, this is where we go to the next slide. Um, there are benefits for staking uh, Luna, right? Sorry, Luna. I keep getting mixed up because Terra and Luna is interchangeable. In, in, my, in my head. So um, the current uh, yield for Luna is actually only 4.6%, right? And this compared to other DeFi... Okay, so for all of you today who are here, right? If you have been through the first two sessions, uh, your mental model of 4.6% is that it's really low. But if you were to compare this to any bank, it's still really high. So uh, I, I will urge everyone to take a relative stance here. But it is low compared to other DeFi protocols. Remember PancakeSwap? Uh, that was like 50 plus percent for a single asset staking pool and it's been around for like a year plus, right? So, so that, that's one point I want to make. Um, but beyond the yield that you get, if you stake your Luna with any validator, you are entitled to weekly airdrops from three of the biggest protocols uh, in Luna, Anchor, Mirror, and Pylon, right? And I'll, we'll talk about Anchor later, as well as new and emerging protocols. So what uh, Terra is trying to build in the ecosystem is trying to reward users who stake Luna to guarantee the stability of the network and of UST by giving them early and preferential access to new protocols that are building in the ecosystem. So think of staking your Luna as um, a long-term investment into the ecosystem growth of Luna, where you will be rewarded uh, early with you know, any sort of tokens issued by new and emerging protocols. Um, in Ethereum, right, um, this is becoming very prominent. Protocols are rewarding users directly, right, uh, for using their services early on, for being early adopters. In Terra, it's a lot more of a structured system, right, and it's even easier for protocols to actually airdrop tokens uh, to the people that have basically diamond-handed their Luna, right, 
they just park it there and they don't touch it, right? Um, one big risk for protocols is that they reward people that literally just did something to get something. So for example, for ENS, um, there was actually a snapshot and a cutoff. A lot of people didn't know. So the volume of ENS transactions actually shot up like 100 times in the few days before the airdrop. But actually, it was already too late because they actually took the snapshot like a month ago. So um, Luna actually tried, Terra actually tried to mitigate that by rewarding uh, the staking of, of Luna. So how do you check on airdrops? Okay, so basically airdrops means that a protocol just drops tokens to your wallet and you have to claim it, right? So it's very simple. Uh, your address will be whitelisted and you can just claim it. Uh, I think there was a question just now on how do you track? There's so many. Actually, it's very simple. So as with everything on the blockchain, right? When there's a problem, someone built something for free that you can use. So uh, there are many, many tools that you can use. Uh, today, we're going to introduce you Teradrops. And I don't even think I need to spend so much time to show it to you. Because if you look at the picture on the right, right, you can see immediately how simple it is to use. Right? Click, just connect your wallet. Right? You can see which airdrops you want to claim. And there's even a claim all function that you can do at one go. Uh, do know that you pay transaction fees on every single one that you claim. Uh, so it's not like if you claim all, then you, you pay less fees. So just want to emphasize that. Um, so um, we recommend that you every week you just set aside a day to check this because like uh, it's a bit obsessive. Uh, for those of you who are married or dating, it might be very annoying to your spouse or your partner who's not into crypto. So make sure your life isn't you know, that impacted by airdrops because uh, you might sound a bit crazy to people who are not in crypto, but all of us here on the call will understand. So uh, just, just hang in there. Yeah. Okay, so that's all there is to sticking on Terra. Uh, We'll take some Q&A now, and I'll pass the time back to Jackson. Okay. Um, yeah, so so for, for again, for this section, right, basically, uh, you stick your Luna into the validators, and then you get airdrops. How do you track it? You go to, uh, the, what's the what's the airdrop site again? I'm using Smart Stick. What, what's the uh, Terra, Terra drops? Okay, so you can go here and uh, track your airdrops. So for airdrops, right, actually for me, the airdrop is once every week. Um, so I check it for my particular airdrop. My one is every Friday. So every Friday I go in, then the airdrop will be there from other protocols. Um, on top of the airdrop, so actually there are two types of rewards that you get for uh, staking your Luna on, on, on uh, Terra Station, right? The first one is actually um, the uh, share of transaction fee. Uh, Clinton, can you go back to the staking um, there's one where you can claim withdraw all rewards. Yeah, okay. So this one, right? So if you, yeah, correct. So that one is basically um, every day, the rewards will actually go up 0 0.001. Uh, you, the mouse down a bit, it should be under the rewards. Yeah, this one, this one, correct. Yeah, so you can track your uh, 0 0.0001 or then you become 0 0.0002 and then you'll go up every every minute or every hour depending on how much uh, Luna you have staked in Terra Station. Uh, and then you can withdraw the rewards anytime. So that's the first uh, reward. And then the second reward uh, by staking is basically your airdrop, which happens every week. So for the weekly airdrops of tokens on the Terra ecosystem, you can uh, use Terra drops to to withdraw it yeah okay there's a lot of questions uh let me see oh boy uh, okay uh question number one um lh when you stake luna how is the u paid out um so i i hope i mentioned that just now so basically when you stake your luna to the validators um you will see your rewards going up every minute or how, depending on how much uh, money you have, uh, how much Luna you stick inside. If you stick very, very little, then your, your reward is like 0 0.00001, so it doesn't see it. Um, but yeah, it's every minute you can withdraw the reward. Lah. Yeah. Um, number two, can you stick from Wong Shins? Can you stick your Luna to different validators? Yes, you can. Um, there are no difference in staking on different validator. Uh, the only difference is that Every validator, uh, when they pay out their uh, your, your reward, right, you can get very weird denomination of, uh, you know, you can get like in Korean uh, Korean Terra or like uh, different different coins. That some they give you in Luna, some they give you in uh, UST, some they give you in, you know, the Euro Terra, Terra and all those kind of stuff. So that's the only difference. But the percentage is almost the same one. Uh, to answer the question again, yes, you can stick your Luna to different validators. For me, I stick in three different validators um, so that I can, you know, decentralize a bit. Like in case one of them 
jalan, right? Run away, right? Then I still have another two, lah. So, so that's that's for me, lah. Um, Trey Clinton, if if you if anything you want to jump in, you can just jump in, okay? Okay. No, no, I think what you say makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Um, from Ivan, uh, what are the different rewards for the different validators? Um, it's the same. So again, um, the only difference is basically when they do the reward payout, right? Some they they pay in very weird denomination, um, and uh, but the effective, uh, percentage is the same. You'll get about three percent to four percent APY in reward, um, but the reward is basically in Luna plus UST plus all the different coins that they have, lah. Yeah, I, I think just on this point, right? Um, if you're thinking of staking a small amount on uh on Terra, uh, my recommendation is uh it's probably not worth your time. Uh, because the rewards are quite low uh, compared to other protocols. Uh, so I, I, I would encourage everyone to think of this more in a long-term uh, you know, perspective. Uh, and also the fact that uh, this is a lot safer. Uh, because if you think about Terra as a protocol, um, it's really trying to anchor UST, right? Which is a stable coin. Uh, other protocols are not. So like, let's say you were to go to a EU farm and farm a native token, right? Uh, there's no pack to value. The token can become zero, right? But because Luna has this dynamic with uh, UST, uh, and we know that demand for UST is actually pretty high now, um, I, I think it's a lot, in the risk reward curve, uh, you are, it's, this is a lot more conservative, right, in many regards. So I think when there's less uh, yield, it usually means that the risk is much lower as well. So you, you just have to find the right balance for yourself. Yeah. So again, for, for staking on, on, on uh, Terra, right? Um, basically, you get about 3% in reward um, and then another 3% or 4% in terms of airdrop. Again, if your amount is very small, it doesn't make uh, much of a difference because the airdrop you'll get is, for example, let's say they airdrop you one anchor, for example, which is worth like one or two dollars, uh, which is not very impactful. Like, and then you have to uh, commit your Luna into the validator and then to unbond it, you need to take like 21 days, uh, which in crypto timeline is a bit long. Lah. Yeah. So that's is that's for staking. Uh, let me see if there are any other question. Uh, LH again, how do you maximize claiming airdrops with minimum transaction fees? You can stack it up. Lah. So you can, so, um, so for all the airdrops, right? Um, they, they're quite snapshot also the same thing. Lah. So uh, every week they are like uh, one airdrop. So you can actually accumulate, uh, you claim at once every two weeks, for example, or three weeks when it makes sense. Uh. For me, I need, I, but the fees for uh, claiming is actually quite low, uh, like 10 cents. Uh. So uh, it's not bad. Then you just, you just need to make sure that your airdrops is probably worth about, I don't know, anything more than $5 for me to, to pay a 10, 10 cent transaction fee. It makes sense for me, really, uh. but that, that's just me. Uh. Yeah, but yeah, to answer your question, you can stick, uh, you can just, uh, claim with more uh, next week, multiple weeks. Lah. Yeah. Uh, Ricardo, any minimum amount to stake to claim from for airdrop? No, it's by, <coughs> it's prorated one. <clears throat> so uh, no, there's no minimum amount. So, but the thing is that if you, if you stake very low, then the airdrop also very, very low, then it doesn't make sense. Like for example, let's say if you stake Luna, one Luna, right? And then they give you like, I don't know, 0 0.01 anchor, for example, right? And also, that doesn't make sense. You know what I mean? Yeah, so um, there's no minimum amount to stake, but I think to make sense, uh, if you want to stake it, I think you need at least like 50 to 100. 100 Luna is how much? Uh? 100 Luna is $5,000. Uh? I think a couple of thousand dollars worth of Luna, then it's worth staking. I feel like, lah. yeah. So that's that. Uh... What frequency, Ben Wong asked, what frequency would you recommend for claiming given the transaction cost? Um, so I, I think it's the same answer. Uh, as long as, because the transaction cost to me is, I think it's about 10 cents. Um, so for me, I always have a mental note that the transaction fee should at least, should maximum be 1% of the whole uh, transaction value. Lah. So yeah, so that's, that's that. Lah. Uh, just to add to Jackie's point, right? Um, mm -hmm. I think your frequency of claiming should also be contingent on what you want to use the airdrops for. For example, if you believe in the potential of Anchor Mirror Pylon, right, which are the weekly airdrops, then you should just leave it there, right? You can hold <coughs> it open uh, as long as you want. Uh, but if you want to sell it immediately to get your ST or something, uh, then maybe a weekly claim makes more sense. Uh, yeah. 
No, no, no. So also, sorry, that one, uh, actually, yeah. you should claim it because you can single stick it also. So like for me, right? Yeah. The airdrops, right? So Anchor, I, I receive the airdrop, right? What I do is I straight away stick it in Anchor for uh, single stick it, I think. Yeah, yeah, I think like 10, 10, the 10% or so. Sure, but, sure. Yeah. I think it depends on your quantum as well because if, if, you're, if you have small amounts, right, then that, yeah. that approach might not, might or might not make sense. So it's, it's also contingent on how much you are sticking. I was operating on the assumption that you have a small amount, then yeah. you, you maybe you shouldn't do it like because like if you're getting twenty cents <coughs> of anchor and you pay, uh, for example, ten cents transaction fee, then might not make sense, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um. Uh. Wait, uh, let me see. Uh. Joven Tay, how far do you see this staking future? Then, surely the more people that get into the game, the APY will drop. Uh. No. Not really. So actually, okay. So on smart stake, right? Sorry. Um. Uh, uh, Clinton, can you go to your website? You go to Smart Stake. Just go website. So what happens is that all the all the airdrops, right? Actually, it's for a limited amount of time only. Yeah. So you go to your Clinton. You go to your Chrome. Help me search for Smart Stake. Uh, and then go to airdrop, and then you see uh, that's like they actually show you how many airdrops left. Uh, yeah. So it might run out soon. <laughs> is what I'm trying to say. <coughs> Yeah, there we go. Oh, well, yes, yes, yes. Uh, but I okay. Uh, you go to terra.smartstick.io slash airdrop. It's on the chat. Sorry, sorry, give me a second, give me a second. I'm having some uh technical issues. Just lagging. Sorry, this is for the question. Let me see what was the question again. How far do you see this staking future? Yeah, so for staking, right? Um, they will airdrop it based on the 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 the, the number of like um uh Stake, uh, stake Luna that you have, but it's only for a limited amount of time. Uh, I move on to the next question first. Boy asks, does airdrop expire if you do not claim? No, it doesn't. It is in your wallet. It's tied to your wallet, if I'm not mistaken. Lah. Can you the address is on? Yeah, yeah. okay. Can, can you see so, this? correct. Uh, you just scroll down. Uh, oh, they changed the website already. Oh, shit. Okay, whoops. Um, you just click one of it, I guess. Uh, for mirror protocol, you click mirror protocol. Uh, yeah, yeah. Is there a... Let me see the... Genesis and quickly. Okay, I think this one, they never expire. You try to see a uh, pylon uh, nexus or something, pylon or something, yeah. <clears throat> Quickly. Okay. Okay. Wait. Okay. Some. It might be my bad. But yeah. So before this, what they will do is basically they will show you um how many more airdrops left. Um. Uh, yeah. So so that's that lah. Sorry, technical uh, diff uh error. Let's just go back to the Q and A. Uh, Jason Lee asks, so do you claim it every week or you can let it, let it stack? Okay. Same question. You can claim it every week. You can let let it stack also. Uh, Sunny asks, how are you guys planning to navigate through bear market when it eventually happens? If Luna drops 85%, are you guys planning to hold it? Oh, this is it won't very... happen. Uh, it won't happen. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, what? It won't happen. It won't happen. Okay. It won't happen, guys. We, we, uh, Luna boo. <laughs> but yeah, I'm, I'm going to hold it. Uh. Uh, yeah, so that's that. Sorry, uh, let's just go to the next question. Jason asks, what do you mean by the account transaction fee? Is that the transaction fee? Yes, every transaction you do on the blockchain, there's a small transaction fee. Uh, I think it's about 10 cents. Uh, the second question is by Luna, uh, by LH, what is a big enough amount of Luna to stake? I think it's about 1000 to $2,000 worth of Luna. <coughs> Actually, if you think of it, right? Uh, Let's say $1,000 worth of Luna, right? Uh, your 3% of $1,000 is how much? $30. $30 divided by 365, that's how much you will get in terms of reward every single day. So then it becomes like what? Uh, 10 cents or less than 10, less than 10 cents in reward per day. So that's if you stake $1,000 worth of uh, Luna, which is well, how much is that? 200 Luna. Yeah. Is it 200 Luna? I feel like it's 200 Luna. Lah. Yeah. So... Uh, you have to think whether it makes sense for you to stick. Lah. Yeah, so I think you should have at least 
three to five thousand dollars for the airdrops to make sense. So far, what I've received in terms of airdrop, right? Um, if you go to the smart stick, right? So I receive a uh, the Valkyrie VKR token. I received the Loop Market token. I receive um, uh, yeah, all the token tokens. I received about ten or twenty of them, I think, or less than ten, I guess. Um, but yeah, so that so that's that's the um tokens that, that's the airdrop that I received lah. So you should have at least I think three to five thousand dollars to for it to make sense lah. Yeah. Um, Sunny, okay, wait, wait, I'm sorry. Uh, do, do, do. something us. So claiming airdrops is on the basis of fastest fingers first. No, 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 no. This one is, you go in claim it's yours. It'll be there for you. Yeah, so it's already allocated already. Yeah, so how, how it works is that your address is basically whitelisted. And when you connect your wallet, then you have access to the airdrop if you qualify. So um, it will not be fastest finger first. Yeah. Yeah. It's not like buying an NFT. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I think that should be all for the airdrop questions. Uh, we just we, we go to the final section on uh, Anchor. We might be overshot on time already. Yeah. Okay, can thanks, Shaggy. So um we're gonna talk a bit about Anchor. Uh, and uh, Anchor is probably the most like critical protocol uh, within the Terra ecosystem. Uh, and why should you be interested in Anchor? Because Anchor enables you to get a relatively um quite uh, I would say conservatively less risk way of increasing your yield quite dramatically. So a lot of you obviously saw the four point six percent and you're like, oh what is this worth it? Doesn't make sense. Are the airdrops worth it? Uh, there are other places you can, you know, stake your capital and, and Anchor is one of them. Uh, so what's Anchor? Um, for users like you and I, uh, Anchor, you should think of it as a low volatility yield farm. Uh, but what Anchor is actually is a savings protocol. Um, and basically you can deposit a uh, stable coin, a UST, and then you can get yield. Uh, it's quite simple. So um, in basically it's decentralized finance, right? So um, if you deposit, basically you get rewarded, uh, but you can also borrow or you can also provide liquidity on Anchor for higher use. Uh, so the simplest way um, and probably the safest way is just to uh, deposit into the protocol. When you deposit in the protocol, what you're doing is uh, basically collateralizing the protocol uh, because it is a lending platform after all uh, where other users can obviously borrow from. Uh, so uh, most Terra users actually use Anchor uh, because it's relatively safe and it's very established. So it's not something that you should be paranoid about. It's not one of those like, U farms that just appeared yesterday. Uh, Anchor is actually quite essential to the whole ecosystem uh, of Terra. Uh, so how do you U farm? Uh, everyone can see the screen, right? Yeah. So actually, again, right, like the UI UX on Terra is really built for mass consumers. And, and it's, it's very, very simple. Uh, so all you need to do is to go to Anchor Protocol, right? Uh, there's a page that says earn, right? Uh, just click on it and you can very easily see like a dashboard which shows you that you can deposit or withdraw UST. It shows you the interest. Uh, currently, it's about 19.5%, about 20% APY. That's about four, about four times of what you get if you stake, uh, right? So what's the downside of doing this? Uh, the downside is that you don't get access to airdrops. If you deposit on Anchor Protocol, um, you are not considered staking to secure, you know, uh, basically the Terra ecosystem. You're staking within Anchor Protocol itself. Therefore, you don't qualify for the airdrops. So I think it's really risk reward. It's it's up to you, uh, choice. Uh, but you can view the expected interest as well. So you know this offers you a very simple way to interact and basically get quite good returns. And remember, right, your deposit here is a stable coin. It's not subject to like wild price fluctuations. A lot of the times when you stake tokens, um, it's relative to the token's price, right? You might get yield, but the price of the token might go down. In which case, the value of what you originally staked has gone down. If you were not a believer of the token and you just bought the token to stake it, uh, obviously economically, this, this will be detrimental to you, right? But here you're staking a stable coin. So it's it's really, really very safe. So uh, I'm just gonna switch my screen quickly. Uh, just give me a second. Yeah, can everyone see my screen? Yes. Yeah. So. So it's actually very simple. Like all you need to do is to connect a wallet, right? And basically you can uh, access any of these uh, you know, pages. Uh, we recommend that you check out earn. So you look at the API, drop a little bit, right, from the slides. So this I I, I copied that, that page yesterday. Uh, this is dynamic, but it's been relatively stable. 
uh, at this range. And this is one of the attractive points of like depositing your UST uh, on Anchor. Uh, and basically you can just claim it, it will just accrue. Uh, so you can also borrow, and this is one point I was sort of discussing with, with uh, Jackie just now. Um, you can borrow uh, up to like 60% LTV. So basically if you uh, put in hundred dollars, you can borrow $60. And what this does is that um, it, you put in collateral, right? And you take out a portion of that, you know, as part of your loan. Uh, typically, during this, in these schemes, you have to pay an interest rate when you return. But uh, on Anchor Protocol, uh, the net APR is actually positive, which means that you're not actually paying any interest. Uh, why do they enable this? Uh, they enable this because by borrowing with collateral, right? The risk to the protocol is that you liquidate, you get liquidated. Right, and that liquidation is covered uh, mainly by uh, the capital that's already been locked in the protocol, right? And basically, you can also participate if you are more risky types, right? Because uh, in liquidation scenarios, actually the people that participate and buy over that uh, that, that positions will get will get rewarded. Um, so I just show you a quick page from um, just give me a second from what it looked like before, right? And I think this again goes back to like early adoption and uh, things like that. So can everyone see my screen? Yes. Okay, so this was before. In, before, right, if you were early adopter, you could actually borrow and get rewarded for borrowing. If this concept sounds very insane to you, it's because when, you, when the protocol first started, as with any DeFi protocol, the most important thing for any lending platform is to uh, accumulate uh, collateral and capital to lock it in the, in, in the platform so that you can enable the platform to grow. Right, so this concept is total value locked. I'm sure you've heard of this uh, before, a lot of you. Um, so to incentivize it, they're actually paying people to borrow to lock collateral, right? At the point, Anchor was not established uh, as a protocol, and that's why they paid people. Uh, but obviously now you see over time as adoption increases, uh, that equalizes to something you know a lot more logical, right? Even though to most of you who are maybe not in DeFi at all, this still seems insane and doesn't make any sense. Uh, but, you know, to most of us who have been spending some time in this space, uh, these are sort of reasonable rates when you think about lending on any protocol. Yeah, so uh, it's as simple as that. Uh, really no frills and not much you need to do or think so much about, uh, and particularly given that you are depositing a stable coin where the price risk is, is basically not really existent at this point uh, to the extent that uh, Terra has developed a lot of the ecosystem. Okay, so uh, that's that. I think today the intention was really to save a lot more time for questions as well. So I'll pass the time back to Jackie. I think we can also chat about other stuff not related to Terra. We spent a lot of time on Terra today. Uh, but I think the idea of Terra was to give you an introduction to a non-EVM uh, chain uh, to show you that there are protocols with very different dynamics from Ethereum and BSC and Polygon. And uh, you, you can still get rewarded for participating within the ecosystem. So I'll pass the time back to, to Jackie. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. So, so uh, hopefully you guys will, will be quite, uh, can understand what Anchor Protocol is. Anchor Protocol, Anchor, I need to slow down. Anchor Protocol is very, very addictive. So for me, right, what I do is basically um, I bond, my, I use my Luna to provide as collateral. I give it to Anchor Protocol. In return, I can borrow up to 60%. Uh, for those of you who, who watch our podcast, basically I, I run through this already. Um, I again I, I commit my Luna as collateral to Anchor Protocol. I can borrow up to 60%. Uh, I can borrow uh 60% worth of UST. With that UST, what you can do is you can put it into the uh earn, which earns you 20%. Okay, but for the more high risk and degen stuff, right? What I do is basically I use that terror uh, UST <clears throat> if you're convicted on. Um, the Luna, for example, you can use, use it to buy more Luna, you know, and then to bond it into the system again to borrow more, you know, so like, um, you know, so that's one way. The second way is the Luna, right? Uh, the UST that you borrow, right? Um, you can actually use it to participate in other farms that gives you like 100%, 200%, 300% on the Terra ecosystem. That's, that's what I'm doing right now. Yeah. Okay. Wait. Let Let's just go into the um uh, the the the, the Q and A. Let's see. Uh, uh, Chun Long asked the most important question. You get paid for borrowing on Anchor. Yes, sir. You're absolutely right. It's a bit ridiculous when this whole thing first started. Um, when it first started, right, the 
you really get paid to borrow. The, the net APY is actually 800 plus percent, a bit ridiculous. Um, basically, when you borrow money from Anchor Protocol, right, they give you token also. And that token is actually worth more than what you borrowed uh, in the early days. Because again, if you, uh, if you understand the whole idea of DeFi, right, what they're trying to do is they're trying to give out uh, native tokens uh, and incentives for people to participate in the protocol. So in the early days, when, not, when there are not as many users to use Anchor Protocol, right? So they give out a lot of like uh, rewards to incentivize, to entice people to come in to use Anchor Protocol to borrow money and save money, lah, basically. Um, so for, again, Chun Long, you get paid for borrowing. Yes. So basically, uh, sorry, uh, Clinton, can you go to the Anchor website? Yeah, give me a second. Yeah, so the net API right now is actually 0%. So technically, you're not paid for borrowing right now. Um, you oh, Okay, so how I understand this, right? I could be wrong. I just had a discussion with Clinton only just now. So what happens is that there's actually a borrow APY. When you borrow money, right, from Anchor Protocol, right, you have to pay 26%. See, on the on, on, on screen there, right? You have to pay 26% interest fee, okay? <clears throat> Which is higher than your bank and, and all those kind of stuff. Like. But... They also give you a distribution APY, which basically is rewarding you. Again, they reward you for using the Anchor Protocol, right? The airdrop or the reward or the incentive is actually equivalent to about 26%. So the net APY for you is because you need to pay 26% and then you earn 26% from the interest rate, right? So the net APY for you for borrowing money is actually 0.07% right now, which means you don't have to pay anything to borrow money. Last time, what happens is that your borrow APY has always been 26%. Okay, they charge you a 26% interest rate for borrowing money. But the distribution APY, they give you a lot of token. It became like 1,000%, for example. So the net APY, APR, is actually about 800 plus percent last time. Lah. So now it's 0% already. So to answer your question, uh, yes, you get paid to borrow, but right now it's zero already lah, because uh, it's stabilized already. Um, now, uh, Moon asks, you put in $100 to borrow $80, end up with lesser money. Okay, uh, Moon, Mr. Moon. <laughs> so your, your $100 is actually your collateral. And then for Anchor Protocol, right, you can only borrow up to 60% only. Okay, so which means if you put in uh, $1,000 worth of Luna as collateral, you still own the, the Luna, ma, right? but then you can have access to a line of credit worth 60% of your value, okay? So, so again, you put in $100, you can borrow up to $60. You end up with lesser money because you're borrowing the $60, but you still own your original money. Ma. So technically, uh, you have free $60 line of credit and you also own your collateral, your, your bonded Luna. La. So hopefully that, that makes sense to you. Yeah, um, so, so, uh, it's an asset-backed loan. So uh, I, I think I give you an analogy. It's like you take a Rolex, right? Let's say your Rolex is 15K. You go to a pawn shop and then they give you 10K. Your Rolex is still there. It's not theirs yet. As long as you give them back the money later, you can get back your Rolex, but you just have access to 10K. What can you do with your 10K? You can go and buy Pancake and stick it on Pancake Swap. And then earn some money, go back, pay back, and you earn money. But basically, you've got a line of credit. And you still can get back a Rolex the moment you redeem the loan. So conceptually, that's kind of how it works, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Let's see. Andrew, for now, without the incentive, I still un don't understand why users want to get uh, Bonded Luna to borrow 60% of the value, also risk being liquidated. Uh, it's just access to line of credit. Lah. So like for me, for example, what I do is... Um, uh, I borrow Luna to participate in all the new ITOs, to participate in uh, new farms, for example, that gives me like 200%, 300% APY. Because to participate in new protocols, I need to have UST or new money, which I, I don't have unlimited amount of money. Lah. So what I do is that I just borrow from Anchor Protocol. And then once I finish you know, farming or like the ITO finish already, I take that and I return back to, 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 to uh, Anchor Protocol. Lah. Yeah, so it's a bit uh, addictive. La. So you need to know your risk. La. Okay, let's see. Uh, uh, are there any other questions? Oh, uh, okay, wait. Uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm just going through the question. 
uh, Jun Long, do they pay in UST for the distribution API? Okay, this one I'm not very, very sure how it works, to be completely honest with you. I feel like in my head, because when I borrow money, right, they haven't charged me yet. So internally, I feel like, I think, uh, is that, you know, the interest rate they need to minus from me, and then they give me the token, which is a distribution API, right? Internally, they work their magic out to minus off each other. Yeah, so I think it's like that. Lah. So I could be wrong. Lah. So uh, if anyone knows the correct answer, please uh, include that in. Lah. But yeah, so so far, all the money that I borrow, right, with the net API right now is 0%. They haven't charged me anything yet. They haven't minus money yet. Yeah, so I, I think is the distribution API, which is an anchor protocol, anchor token, they liquidate it to minus the fees already. I think it's like that. Lah, huh? um, Justin, high risk if you lose. Uh, anchor hacking, uh, this one very hard. Lah. I mean, like, if you are worried about hack, then, you know, all the centralized banks, centralized finance, they're all vulnerable to hacks or so. All the DeFi protocols, every protocols uh accessible to hacking also so uh this why i cannot answer your question uh because yes there's a risk of hacking am i worried uh no because then i have to worry about a lot of other things or so because everything can be hacked right not just in DeFi, but in centralized finance or so la. yeah oh sorry see why i already answered hacking risk applies to all DeFi protocol um uh, does the collateral posted continue to okay? So see what asked another question. Does the collateral posted to anchor continue to earn interest? No, sir. Actually, that's how they, they make so they use your uh your collateral to make money to pay you the interest. I think it's like that. Um, but yeah, so the collateral that you post it, um, no, it doesn't earn any interest. Um, uh, but the collateral that you post it in, if you use it to borrow uh, UST, for example, and then the UST, you put it in the earn module, you can earn 20% on the borrowed uh, UST. Lah. Yeah. Uh, RWCH, is there a deadline to return the money back to Anchor? No, there is no deadline. Yeah, there is no deadline. Um, so hopefully the music continues because they're holding your, your collateral. Ma. Right, it's like again what, what Clinton said, you're holding your Rolex. So they don't need your money back. You can just play with the money, whatever. But if you want your Rolex back, you need to return me my money. Though. Yeah. So yeah. that's and if you if you can't pay back, then they take a Rolex. So that's that's you being liquidated essentially. Yeah. yeah. Mm, okay. Uh Evan Law asks, is it right to say that we stick on Terra Station for its airdrop bonuses? And for Anchor, it is for 20% APY plus 60% borrowing. Uh, correct. So for staking for Terra Station, right, it's basically to uh, be uh, eligible for the airdrops from new protocol launches. Um, so like, for example, recently, uh, there are going to be like 50 to 80 new protocols that are going to be launched on Terra over the next three to six months. And then they have already publicly said that they have allocated X amount of uh, tokens for all Terra uh, stakers. Uh, so it is coming. Lah. Yeah. So to answer your question, yes, it's for uh, airdrop. For Anchor, uh, it's basically for 20%. And uh, you can borrow UST to do whatever you want. Lah. Yeah. Okay. I think that should be most of the questions already. Um, yeah, I think that should be all already. Uh, let us wrap everything up first, I think. Uh, and then after that, we we'll talk about other ecosystem. I wanted to share a bit more about uh, Solana or Solar. Okay, so um, I think that's for the Terra ecosystem. Hopefully, you all understand a little bit about uh, how it works. Um, and I think two things that I hope you all can get away uh, from today. Number one is basically Terra, right, is an example of a blockchain that requires you to have a non-Metamask wallet which basically is the Terra station. And what it means is that you can actually download the extension uh, on your Chrome. So on your Chrome, right, actually, right, there are actually a lot of like uh, wallet extensions. So you have your MetaMask. Now you have your uh, Terra station uh, wallet extension. For, for example, Solana, for example, right, they don't use MetaMask also. So you need to download the Phantom uh, a Chrome extension. And then for other blockchains like your secret, like your, uh, your Atom, for example, they live on this uh, another wallet called uh, Kepler. So that one also have your 
browser extension or so. So for a DGEN, right, how you know that whether they are familiar with all the blockchain, right, is that they would have multiple extensions uh, installed in their browser, not just MetaMask, so yeah, Terra, yada, yada, yada. So that's what we hope you all can understand. And the second is that we wanted to sort of introduce you all the idea of airdrops, free internet and money. Um, and by participating and staking your coins on the validators, you can earn rewards. And then it's just like, you know, airdrop. So I think that's really the two things that we wanted to, you know, let everyone uh, take away from tonight. Um, now with that, I think uh, that sort of sum up our session for tonight. Uh, we go to the next slide. <coughs> yes. So this is a third... This is the third and final installment of our WACME series. Uh, hopefully, you know, you learned something uh, over the last uh, six weeks. Um, again, uh, we, we sort of like told everyone that, you know, if you have attended three of our uh, WACME series, and then you have collected three of the Pope token, you will be entered into a raffle where we will choose, we will airdrop you uh, either a cake token or a Luna token, or what's the, what's the second one? What's the third one? Uh? Uh, Uniswap, yes. So we will either, so we'll choose nine percent. They will win either one Luna or one uh, Uniswap or one uh, Ping Swap token. And then uh, what we will do is basically, uh, someone did ask uh, this before, uh, before the session start, right? Uh, once you claim the Pope token, we have the address on our record already, not on our record, like on the blockchain, on the Pope system. What we can do is basically on that. Uh, all the strings, all the addresses that claim, right? We will just do a raffle and then we will airdrop it directly to the uh, Ethereum wallet. So is you don't have to submit anything. Like, and then we'll, we'll obviously, I don't, I don't know how we can uh, announce the winner. We'll just say like, oh, the winner has selected. This is the wallet address has, that has been uh, selected because we don't know. We don't know whose wallet address has claimed whatever. So that's the beauty of DeFi, right? So we will just choose um, we'll raffle and choose nine wallets with the three pop token and then we will just airdrop it directly to the wallet itself okay so again to claim it right um, join our discord channel uh, discord should be somewhere lah, huh? and then go to the pop channel fill in the google form and your eth address and your discord id what we will do again is we will do a raffle we will airdrop the tokens directly to the ethereum address we don't know who so it's very fair okay um yeah, so then uh, number, we go to the next slide. Uh, the next slide is, okay, so then some of, your, some of you might be asking, oh no, this is the last one already. So we just wanted to share with you what's our, what our plans are. Um, for WebMe series, right, we'll take a one or two months break. So we might return next year, uh, but we will return as part of an online resource hub that we're building on Chain Debrief. Uh, basically on Chain Debrief, what we're working on right now is that we're trying to do more in-depth research content around major blockchain ecosystem. Uh, so you should be able to do in-depth research on our website coming soon. Right now, if you're on our Telegram group, you would also know that we have just launched our NFT Telegram and Instagram. Uh, we're focusing a fair bit about on, on NFT right now because actually NFT, actually the Pope, right, is also a form of NFT. So think about it, right? So, so you know, so we, we are focusing on growing our NFT community over the next uh, one to two months. We have something very exciting that's coming out. We can't wait to share with you all. Um, and again, you know, don't feel like, you know, hey, you know, uh, you know, there's no more WACB series. We'll come back in the next, after six weeks. Lah. So uh, if you have any questions, join our Telegram, join our Discord channel, ask us questions. Lah. I know the Discord, I know the Telegram is getting a bit too, too much to follow, but Try, you know, don't give out on us, like, you know. So, um, uh, yeah, so it was the code. Uh, uh, go back to the slide 25. Uh, CD, whack me, hashtag three. We are very, very basic. So we cannot come up with a better <laughs> code name. But yeah, it's CD, whack me, hashtag three. Okay, uh, so I think that's all for uh, tonight's session. Um, for those of you who want to leave, uh, y'all can uh, tell already. Lah. Um, but if y'all want to stay on, I think we can roughly talk about the Solana ecosystem, Clinton. So for Solana, also the same thing. Uh, Solana, like, it's the same as Luna, right? And to interact with the Solana ecosystem, what you need to do is you need to buy Solana and move it to your phantom address. Um, and then the uh, Clinton, maybe you want to go to your Chrome and maybe share a little bit about, uh, we just go to the website and just roughly tell them what's happening. Yes. 
yeah so uh so this is for luna uh we wanted to squeeze in solana but i think it's a bit too too much already lah. Uh, but solana again uh to to what we can do is we can go to uh the the, the we can do phantom crack the the uh wait my mind is blocked the wallet for phantom uh, for solana is called phantom so uh if you want to interact with solana ecosystem you just download the 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 phantom uh uh wallet yeah yes and then you add to chrome the process same thing so you just add to your chrome sign up your seed phrase voila then you have your extension already right and then what you do is uh, on on centralized exchange right you can buy some solana and then transfer it to your phantom address and then what you can do is you can basically farm on uh the farms already lo. the largest farms on 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 uh solana is radium so you just go to radium and then you can see uh pools mm, uh yeah, so these are the pairs. Uh, the, 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 you see the staking also? Yeah, so correct. So for example, this one, right? Uh, Radium slash Solana LP is about 40, 40 plus percent. Not very exciting. Uh, but they have wrapped Shiba. If you have Shiba, <laughs> if you have Shiba and uh, USDC, you get an up to 300%. So that's for um, uh, Radium. Uh, yeah, so, 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 so that's for Solana. La. Okay, so sorry, can we go back to uh, Terra ecosystem, right? Terra ecosystem recently launched two new protocols. The number one is uh, uh, Nexus protocol. We, we go to uh, Nexus protocol. Yeah. Uh, you click web app. Yes. Uh, you go to your farm. Okay. Yes, okay. So for, for, for Terra, uh, for Terra ecosystem, again, if you have UST, for example, right, or you have, uh, you can actually stick on this farm. This is, I think, recently launched one. The APY is about 100 plus percent, 200 plus percent. So essentially, this is what it means when I say, like, you know, I borrow money from, <laughs> very bad, I borrow money from Anchor to, 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 to put money here, lah. Uh, and earn the 200% and then after that if I earn enough already then I just pay back to anchor la. but obviously this one uh, subject to high, uh, you know the, 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 the volatility of the prices la. Um, so this is one farm that you can actually participate in for Luna and then there's another one called Orion Money you can go to terra.orion.money um, for Clinton <clears throat> So these are all newly launched protocol. I'm just sharing with you all some of the websites for you to optimize and think about uh, earning more money on, on the Terra ecosystem. Lah. So again, Terra ecosystem, mm. uh, oh, so someone is yawning already. So sorry, we're so <laughs> we're very boring. <laughs> but yeah, so for uh, uh, Terra, you can actually stick uh, here also. Uh, you can earn up to like 100 plus percent or so. Um, yes. And then I think those are the two most recent ones. Lah. Um, Clinton, you have anything to add on for Solana or Terra? Uh, I, I think broadly speaking, like um, I would encourage everyone to just explore multiple blockchains. I think now you know we cover in this series, uh, how you access EVM uh, compatible blockchains. Uh, that's one, and then we also covered how you can access a blockchain like Terra, right? Which uh, conceptually you can use to access a Solana secret network. You know, so many others. Uh, and I think along this journey, like you definitely have a lot of questions, right? But at the end of the day, I think most important is like, just think back to the first principles. What do you need? You need a wallet. You need to connect to a browser. Uh, you need to connect to the protocol. You need to have some tokens to pay for transaction fees. Uh, it's all the same. So it's almost like, you know, when you were a kid and you didn't know how to, you know, withdraw money from the ATM. That like, is very mysterious to you, right? Now you do, right? And it's, it's like, uh, it's just a thing you do, right? Whatever country you go, the ATM might look a bit different, but conceptually it's the same thing, right? So I think that that's sort of like what's important. Uh, I know a lot of people are focused on yields and like um, one thing I would say is that uh, one big attraction of DeFi is obviously high yields, right? People want a lot of like high APR, but <coughs> sorry, all this comes at a cost, like, Nobody gives you high APR for no reason. Usually high APR is linked to like protocol being very new, which means that not a lot of people are using it. Uh, or it's very, very risky. Like it's almost like a scam. So I think you, you really do need to make a judgment call. Uh, I really hate the phrase do your own research because to be very, very frank, right? 
you are almost unable to research anything for most protocols. Like you don't know the team. You don't really know much about it. You know there's a token. Uh, you can research protocols that are more established for sure. But a lot of new stuff that's very exciting, you actually can't, you don't know much. So I think it's really like, you have to be comfortable that the capital you're putting in is, is um, what you're willing to lose. It's, it's always a golden rule for all of us so that you don't get into like really big trouble if something really goes wrong. Right? Yeah. So always think about that risk appetite that you have, balance that out with your, your own needs uh, and explore the ecosystem because ultimately like the rewards in this space are huge, but the risks are also pretty big. Uh, and you just need to have the appetite and the stomach for it. Like. So if, if you're new, put a bit of money, a little bit, go and explore. If you have, if you're comfortable, put more money, you know, do however much you want. And if you're expert, then, you know, just, just, just go, you know. So I think really just focus on that as you explore. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think that should be it. Uh, any last questions, anyone? Oh, wait, there is uh, something asked at Clinton. How often do you come across protocols where the founding team are identified on the white paper? Um, okay, so to the public, right, it's very rare. Like, it's very rare that people will adopt themselves. Um, usually, if they have investors, their identities are known to their investors. Uh, that's almost necessary it's very rare that you have an established investor that doesn't know who the hell created the protocol mm. so i think that's one way you can ascertain uh, if a protocol is completely anonymous uh, i wouldn't say it's a red flag because i mean all of us in this space like most of us have uh, pseudonyms like myself uh, you see me here right but my online identity you, you actually don't know who i am right uh, and, and i think that's one of the beauties of it um so Again, like you really have to access your own judgment. Like it's not something that I can give you a straight answer. But I think generally, like the age of the protocol is important. Uh, however, obviously, the longer the protocol is around, the, the lower the yield, right? So then maybe you feel like, oh, is it worth it? Does it make sense? But most protocols that have been around for a year plus, like they are pretty stable, they are established for a reason, and they attract a lot of capital. So you, you just have to make a call. Uh. So I think if it's new, if the developers are anonymous, then you should be careful. Uh, it's actually very common nowadays. So like, you just have to be very careful. Yeah. Okay. I think that should be all. Um, thank you all for joining. Once again, uh, we're from Chain Debrief. Uh, if you haven't joined our community, please do. Uh, please support the stuff that we are doing. Um, you can support us by sharing about us you can support by reading our articles sharing our articles inviting your friends to join our telegram you can also support us by watching our videos on youtube and giving us a like share and subscribe on all of our channels because we are trying to grow and reach more people um, once again i think uh, my name is jackie uh, and clinton um, and, and that concludes our whack me series thank you all thanks guys uh, good night bye bye Bye, guys. Bye-bye, bye-bye, bye-bye.